Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. In this video, players who on the surface appear to be very good players. However, taking a closer look, there are some little things they are doing incorrectly. Again, their overall game is very good. But if they take the time to fix the little things they are doing incorrectly, they will move up in skill level. What are those little things? You'll have to watch the video to find out. So if your play is similar to the way these players are playing and you want to get better, correcting the things I point out will make you a better player. Let me know how you feel about the things I point out by leaving a comment in the comments section below. A special thanks to the YouTube channel Not Guilty Pickleball for posting this video. Let's go. Here comes the first serve. Here comes the third shot. And he missed that by about a foot. The question is, how do you warm up? When you warm up, do you do like a lot of players and just stand at the non-volley zone and dink back and forth? Do you practice your third shot drops? Do you practice third shot drives? Do you practice serving? I'm not sure if these players did. I don't know what their routine was, but he missed that third shot by quite a bit. Maybe he practiced it before he started. Maybe he didn't. My suggestion is hit about five or six third shot drops before you even hit the first serve. I made a video recently about playing with intent. This is a third shot here. When the player with the backwards cap on hit this ball, what do you think his intent was? Do you actually think he thought hitting a shot like this was going to allow him to move forward? His intent with hitting this shot was to get slammed. Let's see what the player in black does. That's good defense, but look at this. This is even higher. I don't know if I can say he was trying to reset the ball there. If he was, this is a very, very poor attempt, and the point is over. That's a very good job by the player in white. He was playing with intent. He set that shot up, and let me show you how he did it. Right here, he hits it to this player's forehand. When he hits it, it gets him off balance, and he comes back with the shot to his backhand, and he pops it up. So great job by him hitting to the forehand and then hitting to the backhand on the next shot. Here comes the third shot. Not quite where he wanted it, but the players in the near court did a very good job of recognizing that the third shot was not effective. So instead of running all the way to the non-volley zone, they stopped where they have stopped and they did a split step in order to defend. Very good job by them. Okay, he's trying a fifth shot reset. Can't make it again. Standing right there with a split step defending and look what happens. He just missed that ball and let me show you why it happened. I want you to watch where his paddle is. Look where his paddle is. It's too low. It should have been much higher and further out in front of him. Again, with that left elbow out in front, it was more to his side. So what happens here is he waits too long to hit this ball. He could have taken this ball out of the air much sooner if his paddle would have been out in front of him, and he probably could have done a backhand flick, but he didn't, and he just missed the ball. Again, it's early in the game. Perhaps they are not warmed up. Good job right there. Fifth shot reset into the kitchen. Excellent. And a far fight there. The guy with the cap on backwards, he just popped it up too high, and you simply cannot do that. All right, here comes another opportunity, and he missed another one. That's two that he's missed. His other one was not effective. So to be honest, he needs to go practice his third shot drops. He hit another ball into the net. Why did that happen? Let's go back and take a look. The main reason is he hit the ball when his paddle was below the net and the top edge of his paddle was parallel with the net. It was not at an angle and so the ball could not go up. Look at this paddle angle right here. Look how his paddle is parallel to the net. The top edge of the paddle is not at an angle. If he would only 
angle that paddle back just a little bit and hit the ball um, above the net instead of below the net, it would have gone over the net. It's all about paddle position sometimes, and he just did not have his paddle in the correct position. Oh, and he got the roll of the tape, and in that instance, that player did have his paddle with the top edge tilted back at an angle, so when the ball hit it, it popped over the net, unlike his partner in black didn't do in the previous shot. So I'm going to freeze the frame and compare how each of the players were holding their paddle. The difference here is quite clear. If you look at the player in black, you can see how his paddle is parallel to the net. And if you look at the ball, you can see when the ball came off of his paddle, it went down into the net. Look at his partner in white. The top edge of his paddle is tilted backwards. So when the ball hits the paddle, which it already has, you can see it's going in an upward motion and it makes its way over the net. This is one of the little things I am talking about. If you can do what the player in white did instead of what the player in black did, it will make you a better pickleball player. A quick timeout to tell you this. I've started a new business venture. I've opened an online store featuring the coolest pickleball swag on the planet. You can find my store, Pickleball Printables, at pickleballprintables.com or simply click the link below in the description of the video. My store features a large selection of men and women's t-shirts, four styles to choose from, cotton, performance, moisture wicking, and v-neck, ceramic coffee mugs, black or white, either 15 ounce or 11 ounce mugs, baseball caps featuring the imprint on a leather patch. 20 ounce stainless steel tumblers, a large 17 by 18 inch tote bag to carry all of your pickleball items, and kiss cut stickers, three sizes to choose from to stick anywhere you want to stick. I've made sure my designs are like no other designs out there. They are clean, cool, clever, uncluttered, and sometimes humorous. I think you're going to love them. Right now, get 10% off your first order by using the coupon code YouTube when you check out. Dink in style with the coolest pickleball swag on the planet at pickleballprintables.com. Good. Not good. Why did he make the first backhand flick and miss the next one? Look how low he is here. This is the lowest he has gotten in this game. It allows him to move his paddle in an upward position and get uh, a backhand flick right here, which is very successful. But look what happens here. After hitting the backhand flick, he puts his paddle back to his body at his knee instead of having it out in front of him. Look where his elbow is. It is behind his body. His elbow should be out in front of him. This is a pretty good uh, shot right here. And the problem is he does not have enough time to react to it because of where his hand is and where his arm is. Again, if his arm would have been out in front of him, he could have reacted quick enough. But because it is not, he cannot. Boom, and he hits it right into the net. You've got to get your hand, especially your elbow, out in front of you. You cannot have it behind you when you get into kind of a firefight like that. Okay, hit it right into the bottom of the net. Just trying to hit it too hard, I guess. The angle of his paddle went straight down, and when that happens, the ball can only go in a downward motion. Nice, very nice backhand flick. Why was he able to do that? Watch when the ball makes contact with the paddle. His paddle is above the net and it clears the net. Another really good backhand flick. That was a really good save by that guy. Oh, and around the post, congratulations. That is just an awesome shot. I really love it. You've got to love that too. If I would have hit that shot, I would have been jumping around and yelling. Nope. Uh, again, let's watch the guy right here. What is the purpose of this shot? This is the second time that he has done this. This is a third shot. 
And again, it looks like he does not practice third shot drops. You have just got to be better than this if you hope to move up in skill level because hitting a third shot like this will get you absolutely nowhere. The guy in black is starting to come on now and his backhand flicks are getting really good. Watch where his paddle is when he hits this. It is above the net. Perfect. Perfect shot. Backhand flick. Very nice. And I think that ball landed in. Mr. Return of Serve giving his opponents a free point. If you want to move up in skill level, you've got to get your return of serve back into the court. And there's a third shot. Drop, missed. I mean, not even close. Not a good effort at all. Good shot. He just did not hustle up to the non-volley zone. And the guy in the backcourt noticed it. Let's watch here. Here comes the third shot. Look, that is a perfect third shot drop. But again, he was very lackadaisical in moving forward. The guy in gray sees that he is not going to make it to the non-volley zone in time. So he hits it at the uh, player's feet in black as he's moving forward, and he just cannot get to it. If you want to move up in skill level, you have got to react quicker than that when you hit a perfect third shot drop. Perfect. And they were not quite sure who should have taken that shot as it was to both players' uh, forehand because one guy is left-handed. Now they're switching sides. They're obviously warmed up now. Let's see if they can get it going. Nope. Trying to defend here. Cannot move up. Nice, nice job there getting up to the non-volley zone. Oh, why would he do that? I mean, they put out the effort to move all the way up to the non-volley zone and ended up just popping the ball up for a really easy put away. Nice. Very nice. The guy in white is a very good player. He missed another one. Another missed serve. If you want to go up in skill level, the first thing you have to do is make sure you get every one of your serves into the court. He missed another one right into the net. If he would only correct his paddle position and maybe get lower to the ground, he would be much better when he's at the net. So far, he has knocked a number of balls into the net. That's a good shot right there. That ball is out of the court. Tried the chicken wing there. It just did not work out for him on that attempt. Okay, let's talk about intent again. By hitting this shot, what was the player in back intending to happen? Missed it. Let me show you some textbook paddle work here by the guy in the white shirt. He is the best player on the court. Watch what happens when this shot comes at him. He's got his paddle out and he does that little cut backhand. Perfect defense. He does it again because look at his paddle. His paddle is tilted backwards and all the ball has to do is hit the paddle. And because of the way he is holding his paddle, the ball is going to bounce back over the net. Just absolutely perfect by the guy in the white shirt. Nice touch, nice flick, and nice top spin slam. Oh, I think they call that ball out. Let me say this as well. You may not have noticed, but the player in white in the backcourt is playing with a Selkirk Lux paddle. 
It is a very touch paddle. It has almost no power. It is for players who play a soft game. I'm not sure which paddle the player in black is playing with, but there's a good possibility his paddle is too powerful. He may want to switch to a, pow a paddle that has less power, and it may be beneficial to his game. I have tried the Selkirk Lux paddle, and I could hit a drive as hard as I could, and it didn't seem to even go to the back service line. That's how soft that paddle is. Good. As well as he has been doing, he just did not bend his knees to go down and get that ball, and he hit it into the net. He missed that shot. I want to point out something that the player in gray is doing when he's hitting third shot drops or trying to reset the ball into the kitchen. When he does that, he raises up his right leg off of the ground. I do see players do that. I personally do not know if it has a benefit. I don't do it when I hit a shot like that. I make sure that my feet are planted firmly on the ground. But almost every time he hits a shot like this, his right foot comes off of the ground. Look at this. Look where his foot is. It kind of forces him to fall back. And it kind of gets him, I believe, out of position to where he has a difficult time with this shot. That is such a good get by the guy in black. Stuck his paddle out there and was able to get it back. And look at this reset. That's a very, very difficult shot all the way at the service line, hitting a backhand into the kitchen. It is great. But look what happens. It's like he stands back there and admires the shot instead of moving forward. And he gets caught. Boom. All he can do is pop it up and the point is over. You have got to hustle up to the non-volley zone when you hit as good of a reset as the guy in black hit, but he totally wasted it. What's the intent of these shots? He was intending to reset that one, but he missed it. I don't know if he raised his right foot up when he hit it, but uh, he gave it a shot. Good shot. Oh, tried to speed things up, and here's what I see a lot of times. Watch right here. He tried to speed it up. There really is no reason to do that. He should have just dinked it back cross court. The ball was not uh, hit hard enough, so it would pop up enough to allow him to try to speed the ball up here. The ball is below the net, and it goes into the net because he was too impatient trying to hit a speed up on a ball that was very difficult to speed up. Oh, he got that. Good job. And this time, the difference is he moved forward when he hit that reset into the kitchen. A while ago, he did not do that. So I think he learned from his mistake. He sped it up that time. The question is, with the ball that he sped up gone out of the court, if the guy in the backer's cap would not have put his paddle up and hit it, I think it might have been close to going out. Oh, he got it. His paddle was just tilted back enough to where when the ball hit his paddle, it went over the net, but barely. Lots of really good things on this point. The first is this defense right here at the nine volley zone on a very powerful third shot drive. His paddle was out in front of him. As you can see, it's not by his side. So his paddle was in a very good position and he got it back. That's a good get by the guy with the cap on backwards. And he sped it up, kind of surprised the guy in the black shirt and he hits it out. Let's see where the guy in black's paddle position was when it was sped up. Let's watch right here. Uh, not a bad position. It still could have been a little bit higher and a little bit further out in front of him. It was kind of into his body and at his waist, and he just cannot react in time to get that ball back. When you get into a firefight like that, you just don't have enough time to react. 
That guy in white is very, very good. Let's see what he did differently than his partner did a while ago. Well, he got lucky because his paddle was down at his waist, but his reflex was very, very good. Let's see if he gets his paddle back into position. Nope. Um, he kind of had to adjust there again, but again, he's quick enough to do it, and he puts the ball away. He has very good hand-eye coordination and very good reflexes, but he could make it easier on himself if his paddle would have been in a better position. Goodbye. That's just, I, I, I totally don't get this. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't understand why a player would hit this shot. There is absolutely no purpose to it. And it was not that great of a return. It was a little deep, but he should have been able to do better than that. Now, look at that. Look at the difference from a horrible shot to an excellent shot and a good job of getting to the non-volley zone after hitting the third shot drop. Missed another one. I have lost count of how many balls have been hit into the net when the players were at the non-volley zone. Very good again. Let's see if they can keep it above the net. Oh, look at this. Very nice hands here. Nice backhand flick twice. Good job by the guy in black. What you have to realize is when you get into a situation like that and the players start firing away, they are only 14 feet away from each other. So your paddle has got to be in a ready position so you can react in a timely manner and get the ball back. I mean, if your paddle is down at your waist and you're firing away, you have very little time to react and you're not going to win a firefight. So that's about three third shot drops he has got in a row after hitting one that was popped up into his opponent's put away zone. And there's another ball at the non-volley zone that goes into the net. This guy has got it going on now. I mean, he's hit like four in a row. Nice reset, nice speed up. That was out of the court. I also think these players should be a little bit more patient at the pro level, you might see some players dink back and forth 20 or 30 times in one exchange. These players have maybe done it at the most, I would say, eight times. Third shot drive, waiting for it. Good hands. That guy in white has excellent hands. That's the end of the game. So there you have it, a very competitive game played by skilled players. They can get much better if they will only fix the little things that are preventing them from being the best pickleball player they want to be. If this is you, fix the little things, you'll be glad you did. That's it from Pickleball Pick Apart. I really hope you learned something from watching this video, and if you did, I hope you take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. And don't forget to check out my new online store, Pickleball Printables, where you'll find the coolest pickleball swag on the planet. This is Rory saying, as always, thanks for watching, and see you on the court.